Today's uh, a wonderful panel with us that we have, a global panel, the best of the best across the board. Two agents from Compass that are partners of ours, that have been great partners for a long time, uh, that are the best of the best at Compass. Also, we have a partner of ours uh, that's joining us out, Faith Wilson is with Christie's uh, for Vancouver. Uh, so we're very excited to have different angles from different parts of the country and also from Canada. Uh, with everything hitting May now, uh, we're starting to lift restrictions. Uh, things are changing quickly. And I think, I feel like the market's getting a lot better than it was before. I know uh, Josh was on the phone uh, negotiating a deal right before we started. So I think things are picking up. So the light's the end of the tunnel, uh, but we'd love to get all your feedback. Uh, let me introduce everyone real quick here. First of all, uh, Vicki Barron, uh, our partner from uh, Compass in New York City. Thank you so much for joining us today, Vicki. We really Thank appreciate you being on and being a great partner as well. Thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to it. You guys are great. Thank you. Vicki, of course, uh, I know my, my latest is number two Compass team in, in New York City, number eight in the country. Hopefully that's, uh, that's accurate. Thank you so much for the shout out. Numbers are <laughs> just numbers. We all work hard to try and do our best. Absolutely. That's why we want to get your, your take on everything. Like, I know you're at ground zero with New York City. We were talking a little bit offline. So, uh, you know, everyone's kind of watching New York and seeing what's going to happen there. Um, and obviously, a lot of things are going on with people moving from the city, maybe people coming back to the city. So uh, we look forward to your insight uh, as to what's going on and uh, what you recommend for consumers uh, and everyone involved in the situation. So thanks again so much for joining us. You are welcome. We also have down here in South Florida, where I am, uh, Josh Dodley, also Compass. Thank you so much for joining us, Josh. Uh, having me. Thank you. I, I know uh, we've had some nice weather down here today, so we're really blessed. Uh, you know, I see the backyard there. Hopefully, you've had a chance to go outside in between all the deals you're working on. I'm trying, I'm trying. But I know you're the Fort Lauderdale waterfront expert uh, and awarded for 2019. Uh, on the list of America's best real estate professionals by Real, real Trends. I know you're one of the up and comers and uh, obviously one of the top agents in South Florida for Compass and top South Florida overall. And we look forward to your insight. Another area that's been uh, affected uh, down here, of course, but it does look like things are getting a lot better. And uh, obviously South Florida is a little different right now than the rest of Florida with the governor lifting restrictions. So we'd love to get your take on what's going on right now and, and what you foresee moving forward. So thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely, thank you. And then, of course, Faith Wilson, uh, who's up in uh, in Vancouver uh, since 2012, the number one agent. She's with Christie's, but also the number one agent overall uh, for uh, West Village, right? West Vancouver. I want to make sure Vancouver, I'm getting the right. Vancouver West, yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I want to make sure I'm getting the right the right facts. Uh, and uh, you know, you've been uh, obviously a trailblazer for Canada. I know that you're on cutting edge with marketing with your website. Uh, I know you're. You're in Vancouver, but there's a global market. So I know a lot of what you do is with Canada, but also globally. So we look forward to hearing your take on what's different for you and for, for Vancouver and Canada as compared to uh, the New York and the big markets in, in um, South Florida as well. So thank, thank you so much for, for having me. Nice to meet everybody. So we'll start with Vicki uh, over in New York. Vicki, uh, first question for you would be, um, how has Corona affected you and your family? Um, I know you, uh, your family does some work on your team, of course. Uh, how has Corona affected you and your family uh, personally and also professionally over the past seven or eight weeks uh, in New York City? Obviously, we affected some more than others. And then also, what do you foresee in the next several weeks uh, happening uh, in terms of New York City and what you recommend for customers that may be thinking about coming into the city or investing in the city? Well, number one, it's... Uh, it's affected me because unfortunately there are some colleagues in the industry that I've had a lot of respect for that are no longer with us. So it really did touch home. New York City was hit pretty badly. And some of those agents, um, you know, were just very important in our industry and, and lovely people and, and we're gonna all miss them. So it's been very difficult to, you know, I have friends that are in California and other regions and, and they're not, it's not as close to home for them because they don't know anyone that they've actually lost through this horrible virus. So that's been, you know, a, a real issue that we've all had to deal with. And as far as, you know, everyone in my immediate family are, is healthy and we're um, doing well, thank goodness. But 
you know, I know that's not the case for everyone else. And that's why in this time, it's so important. I keep telling agents, it is so important. This is not the time to be selling. This is the time to be caring and reaching out to people and just making sure everyone's safe and, and doing okay. And, you know, I actually think that's what it's going to look like even for the next seven or eight weeks. It's more of that nurturing and um, reaching out and taking care of people and making sure that everyone's in a good spot. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That's uh, well said. It's definitely an interesting time right now, balance between uh, the, 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 the health issue, which is the biggest thing, and then obviously economy too. So, exactly. um, agreed 100%. And, you know, and then through this, you know, I did have a number of deals in the, the middle of transactions. So that's been a whole other level of challenges because, you know, you need to nurture those people and, and do business very differently to get to the finish line. And, you know, fortunately they're all closing. No one has backed out of any of the transactions. Um, there have been some small negotiations on those deals, but um, it was mainly because they couldn't get an, inspec an inspection, they couldn't get into the property. So there was some money left behind for accommodation for those sort of things. But other than that, it's it's been, all virtual and a lot of phone calls. What technologies have you been utilizing virtually? I know Zoom's been a big thing, but I know that also in real estate, there's some other uh, tools as well. Have you utilized any technologies now that you hadn't utilized previously to make sure to well, get my service? Well, I'll tell you what the, the coronavirus has done for me personally. It's made me up my game to, to get on the technology because I uh, everyone that knows uh, me chuckles because it's usually my phone and that is my technology. So to be able to even get on Zoom and have this, this meeting and all the webinars and all those things that I've been involved in um, is a whole new world. But I have to tell you, that it works amazingly. I'm very much involved with the Real Estate Board of New York and I'm, on the, I'm the chair for the Education Committee. And I said to them, why don't we just do this going forward? Why are we all running to you know, 51st in, in Lexington when we can just get on and see each other as we are right now? So there, and then Compass, as you know, is a technology genius and, and they're rolling out weekly programs to help all of us. And I'm scrambling and trying to learn all of them as fast as I can. Yeah, I'm right there with you on that. I'm, I'm someone that's uh, sometimes a little bit harder to adjust uh, to technology, but I agree with you. It's really been interesting how things have changed. And it, I think that Zoom can be here to stay and some of the other technologies. So, and Compass of course is obviously known for being on the cutting edge of technology as well as a whole, so. Um, I mean, it's uh, what they're, and I'm sure we'll hear, you know, from others, but the, the technology and what they're providing us is off the chart and they're doing it very quickly. I mean, they're delivering it and we can use it. And it's so impressive that they're forward thinking. And never a better time than, than now for that. Let's go over to another Compass agent. Over in uh, South Florida, Josh Dodley, thank you for joining us. I want to ask you the same question. How has things handled uh, been for you personally uh, and professionally over the last six, seven, eight weeks? Uh, and what do you foresee moving forward for South Florida, La Lauderdale, uh, the beachfront properties, uh, and also uh, the rest of Florida globally? What do you foresee over the next uh, several weeks moving forward? So I've been very fortunate here. Um, you know, my family and I, we've been safe and We've been uh, enjoying a little bit extra, uh, you know, time together, which you know has been nice uh, here, in Broward County. This was one of the hot spots, so we are, um, you know, using a lot of caution, especially as we start to show. And I introduced a safe, a safe showing protocol, which um, we've implemented with all my team members, which is uh, allowing us to sell show properties. Um, we have enjoyed the um, the time to really kind of open up our business and figure out, well, you know, where can we improve? How can we run, you know, more efficient? Compass, um, as Vicki was saying, has done a tremendous job of putting out uh, a ton of um, just trainings and, and skill buildings for our team members. So uh, although they may not be as busy during this time, they're still able to, uh, to sharpen their skills and reach out to their clients and, and um, uh, you know, to build and strengthen those relationships. Uh, no, absolutely. I know. I know. We talked a little bit offline, but um, 
Tell us a little bit more about people maybe coming down here from other areas right now, from the Northeast, highly populated areas. You're, you're having an influx of some people coming down this way, right? Sure. So uh, my team and I, we're very dialed in on our web traffic. And so, you know, we watch that, uh, you, know, you know, daily to see where are our visitors coming from? What types of properties are they looking at? How long are they staying on our site? And are they using mobile? Are they using their desktop? And what we're seeing right now is a lot of desktop activity, searching for a lot of single family homes. And it's driven by lifestyle properties, waterfront, golf course, which makes sense. I think a lot of people up north have been kind of locked down in a condo with, you know, not great weather. And they're realizing, look, I'm going to make the move this year. I'm going to go down to Florida. Um, you know, we also have the tax advantages. So there may have been a lot of people on the fence. And now they're going to go ahead and move forward with that purchase. I'm seeing it with just our own client pool who um, has, uh, you know, who own condos. And now they're, you know, they're moving towards single family homes. So just in the past two to three weeks, we've picked up. You know, tremendously. So right now we are very busy. What technologies have you been using? Uh, uh, different normal. Uh, I know obviously Zoom has been utilized. Anything else that you're using? Zoom is great. So, um, so we love Matterport. We're able to give a potential buyer a full experience of what it would be like uh, to walk that property combined with Google Earth. You really do get the full experience of, of what it would be like to, um, you know, to physically walk the property. I love selling the lifestyle here in Fort Lauderdale. So I've been giving waterfront tours uh, and been you know, pulling up to the house you know, by boat on FaceTime showing uh, you know, the, the dock and the seawall and the exterior of the property. So we're really not skipping a beat. And I think that uh, people are going to be more open to this idea of showing property uh, through Matterport, through Google Earth, through FaceTime. And we actually may be able to move more efficient and faster on deals. Yeah, ultimately that saves a lot of travel time from point A to point yeah. B, especially in South Florida and New York. It takes a couple hours to get to a meeting. You get a lot more done in a day if that, if that works out that way in the end, which is, which is great. Uh, speaking of great weather, over to Faith in Vancouver. I don't know how it is. I'm going to guess it's not as warm as we are down in South Florida. Uh, but I don't know. Is Vancouver, what's the weather like right now in Vancouver? Gorgeous. 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 I'm looking out of my office window here, and there's a little park across the street. And everything, all the trees are out, flowers are all in bloom, but it's actually the last couple of days it really felt like spring. It's warm and no jackets or coats needed. So it's, yeah, it's really lovely here. Yeah, no, well, this is the big time of year. I know uh, a lot of cruise boats come through with the Alaska cruise. I did that one time and it was the best weather ever. It was right around this time of year. Um, but I know that the, you know, I no, guess right the now. winter time's kind of coming to an end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So thank you so much for joining us. Um, obviously, uh, you're dealing with a lot of different situation being in Canada than we are being in the United States. So we'd love to get your take both personally and professionally, how you've handled everything uh, with Corona over the last uh, seven, eight weeks, and then what you foresee moving forward over the next several weeks as well. Okay. Um, well, it, uh, it really just hit like a, like a light switch, actually. Uh, for us here, and I, uh, you know, I feel for like Vicky. I, I have, uh, I know people in New York, and what you're going through there. So I really, uh, I feel for you and, and for your loss as well. For us, it's been, it's been different. Certainly, we have had losses. I haven't had anybody um, uh, personally to me that I that uh, has passed, um, and we are, uh, but we've been very careful here. Social distancing has been a big thing. Um, and I think, you know, we're being good Canadians We have followed the rules and uh, we are at the bottom of the curve now. And um, we got noticed yesterday that we'll be starting to open up um, some essential services uh, starting uh, around Victoria Day. So May 15th, 16th, 17th, um, beauty salons will be opening up. You can get your hair cut which a lot of people are looking forward to. I know it seems like a small thing, but um, I certainly need one. And uh, so things like that. And uh, again, there's, you know, strict protocols in place uh, for, for that. Um, but that's what's happening up here. So things will start to open up. No big gatherings uh, still. Um, and even now, like six people, so close family members will start to be able to come together but no more than six people and there no big gatherings, of course. So that's the next phase for us, phase two. Um, but, you know, um, 
we are being really careful and uh, uh, you just, with the COVID, there could be another spike. So, you know, we've got, we're really watching and I think the government actually is doing a pretty good job of that. And so personally, I've, uh, you know, we've been social distancing. Um, uh, that's been the big thing, no meeting with family or anything like that. Um, and for, and business wise, we are, our office is closed. So I have a, a small boutique brokerage. Our office is closed uh, to the public. Um, my team is here. I have a small team and we're in and out. My listing concierge is here, but basically it's just, it's just us. And the odd agent will come in to get a check or drop a check off or something like that. Uh, but again, we're being very, very careful and my people are coming in here, life solving everything every day. So we've been, we've been good, we've been lucky, and we still are doing business. Um, so um, real estate is deemed an essential service here. Um, and because we haven't, uh, because we've kept this, you know, COVID uh, spike down, um, they have not taken that away. Now, that being said, we are really careful. We have a policy in place on our MLS listing document that you pull down on what has to happen if you're going to show, if you want to see a property, and then what we do when we're there to show a property. So there's masks and gloves and Lysol, and, you know, only a couple of people in the showing at a time. And we've been fortunate that a few of our properties are new and they're vacant, so that's been helpful as well. I did have a client, as um, Josh or Vicky pointed out, um, you know, we, we have people that have sold and need to buy. And one of my clients um, was moving from Vancouver to the island, so we did everything virtually. We looked at the property virtually, what we couldn't see. And this gets back to what I see as some of the new normals that are going to be going on. Josh, you touched on you know, really giving people the perspective of when you're walking up to the property, what does the street look like and all of that. I see that as, as one of the things moving forward that we'll be, all be cognizant of and doing. But basically I sold this client, bought this property and she knew the neighborhood, so she was comfortable with it, but she didn't actually go to the property. We couldn't travel there and she purchased that. So new technologies, I mean, we're talking about that. I mean, we're using Zoom a lot. And I get it, it's like you start to use it. It's like, why aren't we using this all the time? It's so great. Yeah. Uh, we use Bomb Bomb, the video, um, Matterport. Uh, we've always done virtual tours, but again, as I said, now we're looking at it from, well, we've got this, what's the big deal? But it's like giving the person or the potential purchaser the idea of what does this property look like when you're actually on the street? What is around you? What's across the street? That kind of thing. So I think it, it's going to be embellished. And I think that's one of the things moving forward that we're going to all be, uh, and the customers are going to be um, just doing now. They're going to do a lot of more research online and be much more familiar with that property before they come to book a showing and come and book the property. How has it been in terms of the United, uh, people who live in the United States moving to Vancouver? Uh, how's that market been? And, uh, and what would you suggest in terms of benefits would be for someone who lives in the U.S. Uh, to move or get a second home in Vancouver? Yeah, we are a second or third or fourth home uh, city for sure. Um, and there has been, you know, we've had the, uh, we have had people from the U.S. come up. Right now, the borders are a bit tricky, although one of our clients came up from Palm Desert, and I didn't think you could really cross the borders very easily, and, and I thought he was driving up, and he was in the Seattle airport flying home. So, you know, go figure. Um, but there is, you know, yeah, you just never know. Uh, so for you know, for someone from the U.S. that wants to come up here and have a second or second or third home, it is a great lifestyle, no question. We're a real outdoorsy kind of city, um, and there are great amenities, great shopping, great restaurants. I think Vancouver's a pretty foodie kind of town, and there the uh, you know the price points for for eating out is uh, pretty open, so you can get something cheap and cheerful and still be good and go to you know four or five star restaurant, of course, you're going to get that experience. Um, and the, you know, Vancouver isn't, isn't quote unquote cheap to purchase. Um, you know, we sold a little $740,000 condominium on uh, just close by to us and that, you know, that's like a, over, over a thousand square foot. And that would be, that was, a, I think, a pretty good win-win for both parties. Um, when you're looking, so we, I use cost per square foot a lot. I don't know you all do. I'm sure you do if you're doing selling condominiums. Um, but they, our market's dropped a lot. And, and so we're getting into COVID, we really see that we're going to have a huge um, 
downslide on because of COVID. Uh, we already had experienced a 30 and 40% drop in the attached housing market. You mentioned West Vancouver, 40% Vancouver, where we are, 30%. And so now, you know, there's a lot of pent up demand, or there is some. Uh, we had a 50% drop in listings. Um, and this is interesting for March. Our market took this big downturn, and we were just getting out of that. And things were, you know, we're at the bottom, so things are starting to pick up. And March and February were great, and then COVID hit, and it just flattened. So that end of March was really not good for us, but there's a lot of activity. And so people coming up here, they have to expect that they're going to be paying some taxes. But again, we've got a 30 or if you're buying detached home, 30 40% change uh, drop. And then the exchange rates around 30, what, 30 plus 40, I think it's 37 or something now. So it's a really good time to buy. Um, you just have to be aware of some of the taxes. There is a foreign buyer tax, it's 20% here. We have an empty house tax, and this is one of the reasons our market initially dropped. And a speculation tax, but I think New York, you have something now too, don't you? A, a spec tax of some sort yeah. or foreign buyer tax. So you have to take that into consideration, but overall, with the exchange rate and the way the market is right now, it's a really, really great time to come and explore Vancouver. That's great. Vicki, you were, I think you were going to mention something about the taxes in New York. Vicki, were you uh, going to comment on that? No, I was just, it's painful. So, yes, we uh, have. Uh, <laughs> I feel your pain. Yeah. Uh, oh my God. I your, yeah, I feel your pain because the taxes we got hit with some good ones last year and the year before, and they just keep rolling. So it it makes it more challenging. Our mansion tax went up, increased. Um, How they, much is that? They, they talked. It used to be one percent. It was one million dollars, but in New York, as you know, a studio is one million dollars. So. Um, you know, is almost everyone buying an apartment was paying the mansion tax, and then they increased it from one percent to three point nine percent. So it, it it was a big jump. It wasn't. It's across the board. So it's the higher the price, the higher the percentage. They fortunately were talking about a pied de tax that did not get passed. Thank goodness, because that would have just been a double whammy for us. Um, but yeah, we've had, we have a sh our share of taxes. What, what do you foresee, Vicki, moving forward for the rest of 2000, uh, into 2001, uh, in terms of the market for uh, buyers and also sellers? What do you project? Uh, each all right, so it's really interesting. First of all, I like, I have a lot to say about all this because it, ah. it fascinates me. So I've been around long enough. I was in, you know, the 9-11, 2008, 9 issues that we had. And I personally bought real estate through all those times. In fact, probably one of my best purchases as far as appreciation was a place that I bought two days after 9-11. Um, and I also bought right after Lehman Brothers crashed. And, um, and my daughter, uh, my team just closed on something last week. So we tend to have a trend in the family we buy when everyone says you shouldn't be buying. Um, but in New York, the discounts are not as high, certainly as Vancouver. And I would love to hear about Josh in Florida because yeah. in New York, we had a meeting this week where the contracts that got signed, the negotiation was really hovering between seven and 10% that got done a discount off of the ask versus the deals that didn't get done, but people were trying to get deals done. Those deals that failed to actually accomplish the task were asking much greater discounts, you know, between 10 and 20% and they were not getting done. So that tells me what we're dealing with is we have owners that are still looking at the, the prices eight weeks ago. We have buyers wanting the kind of discounts that you're getting in, in Vancouver and Canada. So, and we're not there yet. So where we'll end up, um, I think we need some more time to figure out where that discount's gonna be. And I was on the phone with a reporter earlier today and we'll see how she quotes me because I was really trying to get the message across. And I always say this, the discounts are not equal across the board because the products are not equal. So there will be some products that will warrant a big discount and other products 
will not. So it, you have to really look at, and that's where we all come in to play and we bring value is understanding the difference of option A, B, and C and where the discounts are warranted and when, when they are not. Good point. Yeah, I guess it's a great time to find a deal if it's a, if it's a right deal, otherwise don't do it. And you got to no, buy- my saying, Sorry, Eric, my favorite saying is I would rather buy a great apartment at a fair price than a fair apart apartment at a great price. That makes sense. I got that. I got that. <laughs> I know Josh probably has some things to say with regards to the tax issues. So I know you touched on it a little bit, Josh, but I know that's been an issue we talked about. And I think that works in your favor a little bit. It uh, does. It, it does. Right now, I, 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 for you, uh, with regards to that. Yeah, so what I'm seeing right now in the market, in our condo market, we have really two markets here. Uh, we have our condo market and then we have our single family waterfront um, condo market. I'm seeing seven to 10% uh, as far as discounts go. We had a contract that was uh, we did in December. They ended up canceling it. They ended up re-engaging and we're closing next week. They're getting at about a 12% discount. Uh, so they are taking advantage of that, especially if it's an owner where it's their second uh, property or third property, whatnot. In the luxury waterfront, I'm seeing a 15 to 20% discount, and that goes from original list price to final sales price. Keep in mind, days on market for that, if that could span between two and three brokers up to 400 days. Um, buyers are smarter than ever, as we're all aware, and they are looking for opportunities where properties have been on the market for some time. Uh, working on one right now that I'm sitting in, we're listed at just under 11 million. We have a contract that we're putting back and forth the discount will probably be around 20%. So um, I'm also seeing a lot of luxury buyers come into the market. Um, local buyers who have, eye, have their eyes on, on properties, they're just, they're moving over a couple streets. It's not a, a big ship and they're seeing this is the time to do it. So again, a lot of activity, it's local and we're seeing discounts. What do you see moving forward for the rest of 2020 and on into 2021? What do you project uh, with regard to buyers and sellers over that timeline? I think in the next coming months, as uh, the U.S. starts to gradually reopen, we're going to see a lot of domestic travel. I think people are going to be very reluctant to get on a plane this year and fly internationally, and I don't think anybody's going to get on a cruise ship. So that's going to push people in probably places this summer for vacation that maybe they've never been before. And I think that Florida will be the fail safe for everybody. Uh, they're going to want to get down here. So I think we'll see a lot of people. We'll see a um, more populated South Florida than uh, probably we would in a June, July, and August, which should continue a strong buying season through the summer. I think we'll continue to see discounts. And uh, like any really tough time, the U.S. bounces back very strong. So I'm hoping by 2021 that we're kind of returning to some sort of, uh, of normalcy in our markets. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, let's hope, let's hope, uh, for sure. Faith, up, up to you over in Canada. Um, question with regard to financing. Um, what is the finance, obviously there's mortgage rates that are happening right now that are very aggressive. What do you foresee in terms of opportunity with financing with the banks, with opportunities, uh, with not only mortgage rates, but also specifically for Canada, uh, opportunities that right now are moving forward, what do you perceive with regard to that? that well, uh, first of all, interest rates are, are really great, good for buyers. Uh, we are at, we generally look at three and five year rates here and I probably do 10 or longer. Uh, so five years is a very popular rate for us and we're at around 2.7%, two and a half to 2.79. Um, so rates are good. Um, the banks are a little bit risk adverse. So we, that's what I'm seeing is that if there's anything with a, a particular property, um, they're really scouring the property and condominiums in particular, if there's any issues with it, whether it's parking membranes or envelopes or stuff like that, um, you better have really good documentation and they, they want to see that these things are done or there's a very good proactivity on, on uh, behalf of the, the Strata Council and Corporation. So I'm dealing with a few of those right now. And so there is some adversity to the banks wanting to take on extra risk. So I think that's a big one right now. Um, uh, so I guess really good interest rates. Um, it's a great, it is a good time to buy. I think there is potential for um, 
for good purchases. And I appreciate what Nikki said there. That's super important. Um, and then you have to make sure that what you're buying is, is something that the banks will take on. And I think being pre-approved always in any event, I think all of us know that, but making sure that who's ever looking at the property and that when you are going to purchase that you know that you're, they're pre-approved, what they're pre-approved for, a uh, good financial institution. Um, and we're different up here. Like we have some, like the big five, like big five in Africa. <laughs> we don't have a lot of banking of uh, banks, um, but they're, uh, you know, they're good solid institutions. And so some people may have to go to secondary lenders if they want something that is a bit riskier. That's what I'm seeing right now. The risk is an issue for us, for the banks. And I just want to touch on one other thing that Josh said. Um, you know, when I was talking about 30 and 40 percent, I was talking about the detached housing market. Uh, and this has happened over the course of a few years. So we were at the bottom and then we were just starting to nicely float up a bit. Uh, because we, I look at our market as having three different sort of distinct types over and above, say, waterfront or off the grid type of properties for Vancouver that they're detached, attached, and, ta and, uh, and apartments. And attached are like townhomes, half duplexes, that kind of thing. So we have, and they all, they do um, operate differently. Um, and the price points are so extremely different too, that that would be a factor in how they do the, the market. Yeah, I. Oh, go ahead, Sorry. Go ahead. I just wanted to add on the, the townhouses, that's a market in Manhattan. You know, the townhouses probably only represent 2% of our, our market, but I'm already getting phone calls from people attracted to the idea of having their own um, front door in respect of not having, for an example, some of these luxury buildings that we have in Manhattan, this is what we're dealing with. We have some obviously prominent people that are used to getting their way and they spend a lot of money to be in these buildings and they're told by a board that they their cleaning people cannot come in they cannot have their accountant or manager that manages their life on a daily basis come in their their adult children cannot come and visit no one can come in unless they're living in that apartment and, and they're scratching their head and having a hard time with this because they're spending so much money to have this home within a building of, of other people. And, and there are rules for everyone's safety, which everyone understands because when you're walking through that lobby, you know, the people, the doormen are at risk and you're hitting the elevator and you don't know who's going to get in the elevator with you. And then you have to scrub down the elevator. So, you know, there have been some people who say, well, maybe a townhouse, at least I can decide if I want my cleaning person to come or my adult children to come visit tonight. They can make the call versus uh, another group. So that it's going to be, that's going to, all of it fascinates me, by the way, because I love numbers and I love measuring all of it. So it's really going to be interesting to see um, the appetite and, and what people are going to be attracted to and gravitate towards. Yeah, things are definitely changing a little bit. Um, yeah. What do you see timeline-wise for New York City, uh, Vicki, in terms of the next several months? Um, what do you foresee uh, in terms of people getting back to the city and things getting back to normal or at least half normal with regards to showing properties for you and everything like that? I think, look, I think, first of all, none of us really know because this is so foreign and it's we none of us have gone through it before. But for, I have numerous conversations with my clients from different price points and the common conversation is not so soon. So New York was hit so badly that I think they're going to take a little longer to, to come back around. I mean, I, I don't, I think through the summer, first of all, a lot of people left New York in the summer anyway to go on vacation to the Hamptons or wherever they're going. So they're already there for the most part. But it doesn't mean that deals won't get done because as we're sitting here having this conversation, I have a, a client who's relocating to New York for their job and they're in contract and signing a contract tomorrow to purchase something that they have not seen, but they trusted in me and my team to really identify the property and with the virtual tours and, and what Compass is offering, they were comfortable on the Compass collections to identify something. And then with my guidance, they, we, we got through the process. And 
you know, they're, you know, so I've had three deals go into contract um, since we've been here in the last, say, six weeks. So people will buy. And I do think people are going to, if they're going to live in New York, it's a great time to buy because uh, there's less competition and interest rates are low. And the other thing on interest, I like to talk about financing. In New York, that's the other area that we've always performed really well because m so many people have so much down. They don't finance that much in New York. It, a co-op is typically 25% down, 30% down, 50% down. So when, when you have, the banks love it because you're not asking for 90% financing. Yeah, good point. <laughs> Interesting you say that uh, with regards to uh, people trusting you, uh, you know, maybe not even meeting you. I think that's an opportunity for the best agents like the three of you guys, maybe because a lot of times you go with your friends in real estate and people that you know, but at the end of the day, I think at this point, you have to really go with the best of the best. Otherwise, you can really hurt yourself, especially you need someone you can trust now more than ever. So uh, oh, that's great okay. to hear. It's, very, it's good to hear that things are still moving forward with business too. That's very positive. And that happened in the other, you know, markets we had that were challenged is it was a compliment at the end of the year, I did more transactions. The sales price were lower because prices decreased, but it meant something to me that people were trusting to get to the finish line. And they are going to look for those brokers that have the expertise and the knowledge and the trust. Trust is going to win all day long. Yeah. Great. We talk about technology all day long, but at the end of the day, it's the same old, same stuff as always. Trust and hard work. So, yeah. absolutely. Uh, Josh, over to you. Um, do you see uh, financing? Uh, what's your take with regards to the rates uh, for financing right now? And what do you foresee moving forward with opportunities with financing? Rates are very attractive. There's no doubt about that. Um, I do a lot of business with Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Um, they are still writing business. I'm seeing jumbos in the very, very low threes, if not high twos, if uh, my clients are bringing money over. I'm also seeing some seller financing right now, which um, if people are putting 50% down, uh, that's a very common thing here in South Florida. Um, so yeah, we're still doing deals in, in that sense. Um, and for some of the buyers in kind of the, um, first or second home buyers where they're coming into, let's say six to 750 or 750 to a million five. Um, I think it is going to be a little bit more challenging for them, especially because we are seeing quite a few people who have been uh, laid off or, you know, they're, they're not working at this, this time. I think they're going to see some challenges in uh, three to six months when they go to buy a house, because they're going to have that gap in, in employment. And I don't think there's a plan in place yet from the big banks on how they're going to kind of handle that gap in, in income. So we'll, you know, we'll see how that plays out. What are we looking at? I, I, I think you're wearing a golf shirt. So I'm going to guess you golf. I think the golf courses are open this weekend, right? They are, they are. I haven't been over there yet, but, uh, but yes, they, they did open up the golf, uh, the golf nice. course this week. So. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, and also I know the marina's opened up a little bit too. So the marina, we, we are avid boaters um, yeah, here in Fort Lauderdale. So they did, uh, they did open up. I'm actually the house where I'm sitting right now, it's on, uh, it's on the direct intercoastal waterway. So it's a, a boat show. Uh, all day long here in, uh, in in Fort Lauderdale, so we are we are seeing uh, people really enjoy the lifestyle and the outdoors, and we've had amazing weather, so it's 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 been nice. It's it's helped uh, it's helped get through a really tough time. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Back over to Faith. Uh, Faith just wanted to go back to you one last time and see if you have anything you want to add with regards to uh, you know the audience, the consumers. Uh, any thought, last thoughts that you want to tell people about? Uh, with regards to the situation ongoing and uh, any advice you want to give them? Well, I mean, one of the things for uh, for all of us, I think uh, we've touched on, I mean, trust is is a key thing. Certainly it is the key thing. And, you know, if we're going to talk about people at realtors, fellow realtors, I certainly uh, been talking about this in our offices. You know, our, our clients want to hear from us still. They want to know what's going on. Um, and I, and um, I think that's, one of the key things is to make sure for us that we're staying in touch with our clients and we're giving them good advice. Um, and even if they don't need to do anything right now, just making sure you're reaching out. I think that's super important. 
Um, I, I see here in uh, Vancouver and uh, Greater Vancouver, uh, you know, uh, Vicki, you mentioned it, we don't really know what is going to happen, right? We only know what is at this moment in time. And I guess the, the key thing is to make, uh, you know, stay present, work hard, do, do what you need to do for your clients because there's people that still need our help. Uh, and um, and then make uh, you know the best decisions moving forward that you can you know going forward looking at what you think may happen and and um, you know prepare for that. Um, I think we're going to be in for a little bit of a longer haul here. I think our markets won't really. We're, we're going to need a year to get through this. I think 2021 will be an interesting year, um, and 2022 hopefully things will be back on track. That's what I kind of see up here. That's what I, I'm thinking is going to happen. And, but again, we don't know. So staying present, <laughs> being tenacious as always, giving good advice, and uh, and being in the community. I think for us too, that's been one of the things I think is the best thing that's come out of this. If there's any great thing, is how our communities have come together. We've all mentioned that, and that's what we've seen here too, is people helping each other, and you know looking across the fence and saying hi to your neighbor or, in, you know, social distancing in the hallway or whatever, but you're reaching out and seeing if people need anything. And um, I think that's hopefully some of the lessons that we've learned through this will stay the course after we get past COVID and have the vaccine and all of that. That's what I'm hoping for. Very well said. And I must say Vancouver is a gorgeous city, so uh, like no other. So uh, I know that a lot of people will be coming your way for sure. Um, well, we all live in beautiful places, all of us. Yeah, I, I would just say we all have global cities. We're all very blessed. And yeah. I think we're all in areas where people could do virtual tours and purchase uh, virtually, uh, you know. Uh, so I think we're all blessed in that regard. I agree. Uh, and Vicki, over to you. Uh, same question I just talked to Vicki about. I'm sorry, uh, to Faith about. Uh, any last thoughts that you have for uh, consumers uh, and anyone out there um, that you want to talk to uh, during this hard time right now? I think really the message that, that I give everyone is the advice, because I, I do care, I'm involved with a lot of agents at various firms within our market. And I, I, I'm really stressing with them to just take a deep breath and, and take it one day at a time and do not try to have the pressure that you need to have the answers because we don't have the answers. And if you're honest enough and brave enough to say, I have no idea, let me, let's just talk this through. Instead of trying to present yourself as someone that you're going to, you have the answers, you're going to tell them what to do. You're going to sell them on something. That is the, the kiss of failure right there. If you can just take a seat and remain calm, ask more questions, digest those answers so you can come to a conclusion that truly is best for that individual. They will feel that and they will trust you. And, and as soon as you, it's okay to say, I don't really know, but what I'm hearing is X, Y, and Z. What I'm seeing is this, let me share this with you and let's get on a call tomorrow. Let's give us some thought, let's sleep on it and we'll reconvene tomorrow. As soon as they're like, you're not pressuring them. Let's think about it. I'm hearing from you. It's so important. And I'm really fortunate because so many of my customers um, are really caring and, and friends. And a lot of my business is repeat business or referral business. So they're coming together. I, I listed something today where the owner said, you know what? I'm home all day. I will, I will open the door and make sure they have the booties on. You can FaceTime if, if you want, Vicki, or you know, you don't need, I want less people in my home. How can we, this is a partnership. How can we do this together to get my apartment sold? And they, they're they just really caring, great people. And it makes me want to work that much harder for them. Oh, great thoughts. I got to remind myself, take a deep breath sometimes too. I agree. One day at a time is a good way to go right now. But yeah, yeah at the end of the day, it sounds like uh, honesty and, and compassion and getting through this together uh, is, is, is the way to go. So all uh, terrific thoughts. And uh, uh, I think we'll all get through this together. Um, but thank you so much for all the great insight. Uh, well, Josh, one last thing, Eric, before uh, we come to Josh, is I think also it's such a great time that we as agents, because we always run so fast. And this is at least a time that we can 
self-reflect, pause, and rethink and restructure our business and where we're going. Yeah. You know, I often say the biggest mistake I've made in my career is my business, um, you know, my business takes control over me instead of me taking control over it because I'm just reactive to all, it's a lot of volume. And that's not a good way to really run. You want to be able to pause for a moment and you want to direct and drive your business in the direction you want it to go and be able to think strategically how you can come up with better ways to service the people and take care of them. And this is allowing us time to do that. Absolutely. Absolutely, Josh, I'm gonna ask you the same question. So uh, if you wanna get into it, uh, any last thoughts that you have for everyone out there? Uh, absolutely. For, you know, first off, Eric, thank you so much uh, for having me on this panel and to be in the company of Faith and Vicky is, is uh, you know, is a real honor. So, so thank you. And um, I mean, really to echo um, what they said is this is an excellent time to just kind of regroup, uh, sharpen your skills, uh, really focus on the people who already know you and like you and trust you. And um, to be in a position that when we really pull out of this, that you have everything that you've ever put on a sticky note or a whiteboard or scribble down in, in some yellow pad, any idea or project that you've completed those. So when you're ready and, and things are back to normal, you're fully optimized. And so that's what I've been working on with, with our team. And that's what, um, that's the position uh, that, uh, you know, that we'll be in when, when we do come out of this. So uh, again, you know, thank you all for your time. And it's, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you guys all for joining us. Uh, I'm a get Haas, director of Home Residence Home Living. We've had an amazing uh, group with us, Game Changers, uh, Hope Leaders, uh, Josh from South, South Florida. Thank you so much, Vicki uh, in New York City uh, and Faith up in Canada, Vancouver. Uh, Global Markets, the best of the best in each market. Very blessed and grateful to have you guys on here to get great insight to our audience, our consumers. Thank you for being great partners. Thank you for all the great insight. We'd love to have you guys on again really soon. And uh, everyone be safe. Have a great weekend. Thanks again so much, everyone. Thanks, Eric. Thank you. Take care.